Hey everybody, this is my review of the fan-made Castlevania game entitled Castlevania The Seal of the Curse. Um, it's, in my opinion, there's a, it's a very good game overall. Um, I think the first thing people won't like about it is kind of the slow pace of it. Um, Simon doesn't go real fast. Um, the, the mechanics of the attacks and, and the way you do things is a little different. Um, you don't have to throw holy water all over the place to um, find things. Um, so there's some game mechanics changes to watch out for. Um, this is essentially a Castlevania 2.5. Um, you one could say if you're basing it on the NES trilogy uh, mythos or whatever the word I want to use is there. Um, uh, what it is is Simon has defeated um, Dracula in this in the quote unquote light realm, um, but he now needs to take him on in the uh, chaos realm in order to truly destroy him for good. Um, I thought that th there's a lot of irony that goes on. The, the guy has definitely, you know, played the original Castlevania 2 and, um, gone over some of the mechanics of that and changed things a little bit. Um, there's the first thing to do in this town is leave and never return versus, um, first thing to do in this town is buy a white crystal. Um, it's not, in some, it's like Castlevania 2, but it's, in some ways it's a new game with new rules um, that you'll have to adapt to and they're not terribly hard to adapt to um, and you'll just notice that this game is more difficult in general compared to your sort of um, abilities in, in Castlevania 2 for the NES um, but um, one thing you can say is the uh, dialogue with the the uh, local townspeople is much more useful. It's actually going to help you get through the game. Um, some people they'll just say, "Hey, I'll look at you as the legendary Simon Belmont," or they'll actually tell you something you can use. <laughs> um, but it's not cryptic nonsense. Um, it's definitely not that. So that's good. Um, I guess one of the big improvements to note is um, Dracula's. Um, ribs are used to shield you against evil they literally look like a rib cage um, so I mean the detail he put into that is very good there um, you don't you're not going to necessarily repeat the things that you did in Castlevania 2 um, there's some things that are different so you have some there's the, like I said there's a chaos realm uh, as soon as a picture of that comes up I'll talk more about that um, and they're, um, but yeah, um, here's a, where you go to a priest and you don't heal at the priests. There's actually like save spots that are more like something from Castlevania Symphony of the Night or one of the Metroidvania type games, um, uh, for Castle Castlevania type games. Um, and see, he just has priests say funny things like this, um, in the game. Uh, but I don't believe they heal you. You really have to find the save spots, which aren't hard to find. Um, necessarily um, there's like a forest uh, spot from early on in the game and a lot of the, gro the ground layouts you'll recognize from Castlevania too it's he, the changes are minor um, it's more the game mechanics I mean it's beautifully drawn um, the art is very nice um, I guess Transylvania is known for two things it's mountains and it's forests um, I think the name, the word, the, the name of the country translates to lands of the forest or something. Um, I, from, I heard from something. Um, here's a picture of one of the, um, mansions during the day. Um, you cannot enter the mansions during the day. You, it has to be at night. So you have to find one of those chaos gates in order to go in them. Um, so when you, when you, when you'll have Simon stand in front of it, a question mark will appear above his head. Um, he can't go in like he could um, before. Um, so again, there's some new rules with this game to uh, pay attention to. Um, and there's what one of your chaos gates is going to look like. Um, you'll go into that and then you'll see the world. Uh, you'll go into a screen that says what a horrible night to have a curse. Um, which only happens when you go in a gate. It doesn't. It's not like it happens every five minutes or so like it does in the old Nintendo game. Um, it's a little more thought out here, um, so that's nice. Um, 
and here's an example of that screen right there. Um, and it's cool he did the film thing, which is sort of a classic thing with the Castlevanias, considering that they're a, um, based on the Hammer series. Um, and the music is really well done. The music is really well done. The visuals are very, very exquisite. Um, I mean, the guy, is an, the guy is an artist, visual artist in his own right. If he did the music too, I mean, wow. I mean, the fact that he's a... One guy has done uh, this much um, by himself is awesome. Um, these are one of the few sets of stairs I encountered within the entire game. One of the big changes this game has is you're going to platform. You're going to jump on top of things rather than go to up and down stairs. That's the big change that this game has um, compared to uh, other Castlevanias, per se. There's no ropes like in the Game Boy games or in some of the latter uh, uh, Castlevania games. There's no stairs. It's all platforming. Um, and the paths are pretty much um, set. I mean, once you, when you're in the night realm, once you get to the next part, you can't go back. Um, so, I mean, you just kind of progress forward that way. This is what one of the, the uh, mansions looks like during the night, and then the doors open and you can go in. Um, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, definitely some rich visuals. Um, you're seeing still frames. You're not seeing how that sort of that those red dots sort of rain down uh, slowly as you go. Um, I think this is Berkeley Mansion. This is the first mansion, um, and you'll recognize the layout for the most part. He didn't change much there uh, for Berkeley. I'm not going to give away the whole game. I'm just I'm giving you enough to introduce you to the game and encourage you to go to um, go play it. Um, but there's Berkeley Mansion. As you can see, it's platforms instead of where you normally had stairs before. Um, so you can kind of navigate going up and down a bit quicker. Um, one thing I will share is the game progresses. You get, I think you're done with the second or third mansion. Uh, Simon's face starts to lo not look so good. Um, he says, it has begun the curse. I'm losing my face quite literally. In a day or two, I may lose my eyesight and... I'm not that skilled skilled in a blind fight and I don't have time to learn. I must hurry. Um, so the curse is not the curse is affecting Simon physically. It's literally slowly kind of killing him. Um, so he really needs to deal with this and get it done with. Um, it's also killing the people of Transylvania. There are certain people that um, are, are uh, also having issues. Um, they're literally kind of slowly rotting. Um, which it's Castlevania, you know, goriness is kind of part of the formula of these games, sort of a dark theme, dark humor, you know, the priest who eats babies, stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and, uh, so there's, and there's one, there's one person who's suffering in the curse, there's another one they're suffering, you know, they look, looking pretty bad. Um, so I mean that's just something that you'll encounter as you run through the game and you do you you want to talk to every villager you can and see what they have to tell you and if they have any information or if they're just kind of saying silly things or if they're saying uh, dark things like this. Um, but as you can see, platforms and of stairs. There's your big change there. Um, and I thought I'd save this one for last. This is um. I'll just remind you of the, the statement from the original game, don't look into the Death Star or you will die. Um, without giving away too many details, I just wanted to show this to you, this boss that you'll deal with. Um, the boss fights are hard. Um, they're not, you're not going to be able to just whip things to death and, and do that. You're, there's some strategy involved in the fighting. Um, so he did a really good job of designing a game that um, has, you know, that element to it. So, um, it's not a huge game um, in terms of the map. It's not an RPG endless world game. It does have a basic, pretty linear progression to the way it plays. Uh, potentially veteran players could possibly beat this game within a day, maybe, if you want to. Um, but it's sort of a continuation story made up by a fan based on the lore of the games of maybe the the story if, if, if Simon truly didn't defeat Dracula uh, the first time or the second time even apparently there's this is round three technically 
between Simon and, and Dracula, um, how that might go and how that how that could work and things. So, um, um, it does have, like I said, the, the old school mechanics with the way the controls work, the way the attacks work are kind of delayed, you know, which was a thing since Castlevania 1 in 1987 or whatever since it came out. So it's not like this is new, that's new, um, or anything. Um, it's definitely got some old school challenge along with making a new story that's well rooted in, in, in the lore. So um, overall I would recommend the game. Um, it's, it's beautifully drawn, it's, the music's wonderful. Um, there's really, if you're a Castlevania fan of any semi-serious caliber, you need to play this game. It's free for download. Go to Ark House. Uh, the creators goes by Ark House. Um, you can Google it, Ark House, Castlevania, Seal of the Curse, and uh, get you a copy. All right. Thanks for listening. One more quick thing I want to mention um, he did. When you're in the Dark Realm, you'll see this sort of halo that surrounds you, and then you won't be able to see things that are like on the corner of the screen. Um, I do want to say that kind of hails to the old Nosferatu film that's out there. Um, it's made in like the 1920s, um, which I think is a cool homage thing to do um, in the thing. Again, there's that's part of the artistic style that he was going for. Um, so I really like, you know, there's a lot of love went into this game. So you, again, I would recommend playing it. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening.